Hello and welcome to Mike's Garage. I always ask you, of course, to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And when you do, please tap the little notification bell so you'll be notified each time one of our new videos comes up. Also, if you tap the little like button, we appreciate that too. Now, in our last video, I was working on Jim's Evo here. I was setting the end play on the cam and all of a sudden I realized I didn't have the right shim out here that I needed. I dug around and I found it. Uh, I had already set the end play on the breather. So I tried that shim and it fit. I don't see any reason to pull this apart again. Everyone's already seen that. But by checking it here, I find that I have a good, healthy end play that I want for this cam. Um, I think it's like, what, 11? Yeah, it's like 11 to 12. Book recommends like three quarters of a thousandth to 17 and a half, something like that. I like 11 to 14 makes me happy. That's adequate play. Remembering that your crankcases do expand and you don't want things too tight in there. You also don't want them so loose they're flopping around. So we had already set the end play in the breather gear, set the end play in the cam. Uh, we have a new cam bearing, we have a new cam seal, so all we're going to do now is finish putting it together. I'm going to put the uh, ignition parts in here. This is the cup that times your electronic ignition, and it goes right here on the end of the cam. There's a little, I don't know whether to call it a detent or what to call it, that little gizwiz right there actually times itself. On the end of the cam. So you want to feel it in place, make sure it's nice and home before you put the screw in that holds it. So we'll put the screw in there now and I think I have a tool just for that. Let's see. Put that in place, and we'll just set it nice and tight. Torque spec is about, uh, uh, that's the torque spec. Start getting tighter than that, you're going to shear it off. You just want to make sure it stays put. Uh, the next thing is we'll put the, uh, the ignition module back in place which is always fun in these. Always fun. I mean, you can't beat it for a good time. You want to be sure you don't hurt these wires. There always a fight and you have to win and winning means you didn't hurt them. Feed those wires through there very carefully. And that's about where it goes. And we can set it very carefully when we're done. I think I've made a mark in there before. Yeah. Like right about there. Okay. I just did that to get all that stuff out of the way. Um, 
Let's see, we got the screws for it? Yeah. We'll put those in. And we'll leave the cover off until we get it done. I got a screwdriver for it. You did? Okay. Yeah, I got one. Thank you, Jim. We'll put it in all the way and then back it out so we can adjust the timing for our initial setting. It's real important to do that carefully like you just did because otherwise you can uh, cut through that insulation. Oh yeah. Ask me how I know. Oh, I think everybody's <laughs> done it except people that haven't done it yet. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that's good. We'll just leave it like that for now. And I wanted to do that so I could put this little plate back in place that holds this wire here. So we can put that in there. Yeah, because I was really glad I found the right cam shim. Okay. And let's see. We'll get those two in there. And then we'll torque the cover on real nice. And we'll tie that wire back when we're done too. We'll have to go over this bike and uh, yeah, I think yeah, we're real there. good it's there. Good. It's good. I just was. Yeah. Okay. Now, in torquing these, uh, the book calls out something like 90 to 120. And that's what I think I'll do. So. One. Two, three, four, five, and six. And that cam cover is done. And the cam is set. And it feels good. Beautiful. So the only thing now I'd like to do real quick now, is... Excuse pardon, me, Mike. What were you feeling for there to make sure... That in play the cam. I'm sorry. Sure it's a reflex with me. Yeah, yeah. I know it's straight. I know it's right. Just wanted to feel it one more time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, what can I say? Um... So I have a set of lifters here. These are the rears. And uh, they're all cleaned up and in good shape. I'm going to put a little assembly lube on the lifters. Even though I know they're oiled, you've cleaned them. And clean is real nice. And assembly lube is even nicer. Yeah, it'll, it'll cling until uh, fresh oil gets on it. Yeah, which is going to be PDQ. real soon. Yeah. What are you going to say, PDQ? Yeah, pretty damn quick. All right. Now, when I'm using paper gaskets, I like to use copper coat. These are foam and metal. And when these things crush down, they are home. Now the important thing to bear in mind here, and you can show it here, Mike, and I can probably show it by lifting the gasket. That's the oil hole. That's where the oil comes in. It comes in from the passage here in the case, and it runs oil to those hydraulic lifters. And believe me, it had better do it.
That's why we cleaned the tappet screen out. Lifters or tappets are pretty much the same word. So we're going to put these lifters in. We could do it with a magnet or we could do it with my fingers. And in this case, we're using my fingers. Now, I forgot to get out one of my little tappet screws. One of one that holds the uh, you know, the one that holds the tappet blocks. Show people around the motor a little bit for a moment, would you, Mike? Got them. There, that didn't take too long. What these do is they're a tool that aligns the tappet block. So I'll feel, feel that screw into place through the gasket and through the tappet block to align it. Now you can use one, or if you're like me, you want to use two. And these are five sixteenths. You don't want to put them down too tight. All you're doing is aligning the tappet blocks. Okay. Now we'll put in some of these screws. And as soon as we get these all in, we'll put in the other pair of lifters and everyone's waiting to see me drop those into the motor and then have to chase them out again with a magnet. You always want to start these screws with your fingers so that you know you're not cross-threading them. Something like this. Oh, that feels nice. There we go. So, Put them down here real quick. And we're sure we oriented those oil holes. Now there's two ways to put this whole motor together. You can, you can put the bottoms on first or the tops on first. In this case, we put everything in the bottom first, and we can put everything down from the top. The big deal is really getting the push rods in, and we're going to do that. We'll do that uh, probably, I don't know, in our next video, but well, let's see what we do on this one first. Okay. Now that we have those two screws in, we can take these alignment screws out, and they really do align the tappet rollers on the cam very well. You can see it on one side when you've got one tappet block out. But once you get the other one on there, you can't see it at all. So it's really a worthwhile little uh, thing. Okay, there's the two screws out. Yeah, you want to see those? Maybe I should go like that and show them because they are a tapered screw 
so that it locates that tappet block exactly where it's supposed to be. Is that good? Okay. Do the tappet block screws have a torque spec, or is that a, a kind of a hand feel grunt kind of? A well, it's another one of those. They're a quarter inch bolt, so they're basically a ninety to one twenty inch pounds. Okay. You don't want to get carried away. In fact. I probably won't even do them in the video. I'll just go over them when we're done here. Yeah. That's a that's a wrong socket. Pretty lame. That's why I was spinning. Yeah. Well, these are 12 points. If you put a six, a five sixteenth six point on them, it's just wobbling around. Huh? <laughs> okay, so I'll just cinch them down a bit, and I'll go back and torque them later, probably to 90 to 100 pound inch pounds. Inch pounds. 12 inch pounds equals one foot pound. And for you guys out there working with Newton meters, I'm sorry, I don't know Newton meters. I didn't grow up with Newton meters. I never met him. You know, I've got one torque wrench that goes up to Newton, that, that actually reads in Newton meters. But it's a big torque wrench for something big I was doing. I don't remember what it was. Something big, probably something very big, like a diesel truck or something. You know, I already put assembly lube on the, on the cam, but I just want to be sure that we have assembly lube in this motor. Happy motor. This is going to be happy motoring, Jim. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're getting kind of antsy to ride this thing. I am. I know you am. Okay. Again, very carefully, we're going to look at this hole. And we're going to take this and make sure we're oriented to the hole right there. And then we're going to take and hold this magnet up as we put this in place. And when you're doing this, if something comes loose, all you have to do is stop and start over. It's not, it's not that big a deal. Let's get this little five sixteenths here. <clears throat> now, nobody ever used alignment screws on these things that I know of until Evos came out. I don't know that it makes that much difference, but it's something I can do, so I do. I like the idea of them being tapered. It makes sure that you're getting the hole centered over the... Oh yeah, they're, they, they are made specifically for, for putting lifter blocks. blocks in. Yeah. I mean, they're for what we're using them right now. Yeah. Yeah. 
and uh, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's a thing. Well, if you just use the screw, there's still play. There's room for play. There's yeah. room for play, but with that tapered uh, they're shank in there, they're centered over the threaded yep. opening, so you know it's well going to be correct in all four openings. You know, when they went to aluminum lifter blocks years ago, I was kind of bummed about it. But they never give any trouble. They must be pretty good. I mean, I've seen some wear, and I've and I've uh, honed them for oversized lifters. You know, Harley had aluminum lifter blocks in their first pan heads, like forty-eight to fifty-two. They made aluminum lifter blocks. They're kind of a rare item today to even find any. There's a pair over there in my bike, and we did oversize them. Wait a minute, my bike's outside. We did oversize them when we did them years ago. I went to oversized lifters, which made them quiet for a minute or two. <laughs> more of those in there and uh, this part's done <clears throat> I think uh, we're gonna want to tie that wire back and things like that but uh, yeah pretty sanitary which is the goal Here, still mesmerized, just looking at this side of the head. Yeah, like that, just seeing the, <laughs> seeing yeah. the pretties. I've already taken pictures of it, and I'm sitting here thinking, oh, I gotta get another picture. Yeah, I understand. Yes, I had a pair of heads like that done years ago for my shovel head. I put them on the coffee table. I didn't want to put them on the bike. I just wanted to sit there and stare at them. Yeah. Well, I know you had the flatbed motor on your dining oh, room the table. the flathead? Yeah, it's down yeah. that stand in the kitchen. Yeah, the flathead. Yeah. That stood in your kitchen for years. Yep. All right. I will come back and torque those shortly. But that pretty well does it for now. Um, we've got the whole cam chest together, lifter blocks on. The next thing we need to do is put the rocker boxes on and together. We'll do all the monkey motion that it takes to get that rear one on and laugh at each other as we do it, and that's what <laughs> we will do. And then people will see that there's nothing wrong with them. They're no worse than us. Okay? Yep, I'm ready. Okay, until then, we'll see you out on the road. <laughs>